Look over there. I think... Is that a bird? No. I think it's a plane. Yeah, you're right. It's pulling a banner. The bright... The brighter side. Hi, I'm Sarah Albertson, host of The Brighter Side, a show showing a brighter side of the world. Weekly guests who are sharing their stories in hopes of moving and inspiring others to do good in our world. The brighter it is, the better. I want to experience the brighter side. Listen Wednesday afternoons at 4 and Sunday nights at 11.30 on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Bring on the positivity. 45 years of broadcasting. Come on. The voice of Nassau Community College. I love this station. 90.3 WHPC. WHPC HD Garden City. Available on the iHeartRadio app. Ninety point three, WHPC. If the Abbott and Costello show is on, it means that either there's a Yankee rain out in the old days, or the game went a little long and they start the show already. One of the great shows of all time, Abbott and Costello. With that, they were this way. Without Abbott and Costello, Tim, there is no Seinfeld. That's probably true. You know, there was a character called Stinky. Uh, it was Joe Be- played by Joe Besser on the Abbott and Costello show. Stinky is Newman. Think of it that way. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Newman. So that's just part of our thing. And speaking of Yankees, we will be talking uh, with Bill Madden in a few minutes from the New York Daily News as he helped break the story of uh, the fact that Aaron Boone, <laughs> I'm a little shocked by this, is the new manager of the New York Yankees. Yes, we will, uh, we will find out what, uh, what separated Aaron Boone from the uh, – the myriad of uh, contenders who interviewed for the job. Yeah, I was hoping Reggie. You know. <laughs> no. I really do. I think Reggie would be a great manager. Uh, no. Maybe those not at this point. Those days are gone. Yeah, he, I think he cares more about his cars now, but I think he would have been a great manager. In his, in you do realize that at this point in his life, Reggie is yeah, 70. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, just checking. I, I know. I just, I just would have liked to have seen that happen. Anyway, let's talk the big story right now. First of all, the Jets win again. Which is great, even though Timmy's like, no, they shouldn't be winning. They shouldn't. And be. and Stupid. but they are, but and that's a good thing. But the Giants, they're supposed to be the classiest organization in the NFL, and they look like a bunch of bums this week. Not just because they lost, but because they treated again, lost again. They treated their future Hall of Fame quarterback like he was a third stringer. I'll let Timmy start off because that's the way I am. What a guy. Yes. Thank you. Anyway, the the Giants this week, as bad as this season has been, the Giants this week just thoroughly embarrassed the franchise. Uh, I, I don't even know how to say that emph- as emphatically as, as it needs to be said. The main problem I think the Giants fans had, and the reason that there was so much outrage about Eli Manning not starting yesterday and, and ending his consecutive game started streak at 210. I think the main issue there wasn't so much that that it wasn't that Eli wasn't starting in the first place because the Giants do need to look at what they have for the future. That being said, Geno Smith is not part of that future. And Geno Smith never should have been the guy to end Eli Manning's consecutive game started streak. And, and there are a lot of people who are saying, well, Eli deserved to have the chance to write his own ending. Uh, Peyton Manning didn't get a chance to do that. Almost no one does. All right. Joe Namath didn't get a chance to do that. It doesn't happen that way very often in the NFL. All right. Sometimes it does, but the Giants aren't in that situation right now where they can afford – or, or even th- that they know who the, who the next who their next quarterback is going to be because that guy could be Davis Webb. I doubt it will be now because the Giants are going to have, or more than likely, are going to have the second pick in in the upcoming NFL draft. So that's a perfect spot to grab your next franchise quarterback. Now, would would some people like to see Eli play another year or two or three or whatever? Sure, they would. You know, Giants fans love Eli. Eli brought them two Super Bowls. He, he's been a, a, a franchise mainstay, and like I said, 210 consecutive starts in a row. 
Eli was one of the few things with this team that you knew was going to be there. Yep. He he is he is a beloved player in this franchise's history. Pretty much unquestionably the best quarterback to ever play for the franchise. Owns m- o- almost all of the franchise records for passing. He he will go down as an all time great giant. Now that being said, Eli is a few days away from being thirty seven. His time in New York, I hate to say it, is done. And the reason that it's done is because the Giants will be able to draft a new franchise quarterback at number two. Think about when the Indianapolis Colts were able to draft Andrew Luck. It's it's that kind of situation. And they gave up on Peyton. And they gave up on Peyton because they, you can't have them both on the same roster. That's it's too it's too much money invested in your quarterback spot. You can't have a twenty million dollar backup. All right. So the Giants can go out in the off season and sign somebody like like they like they signed Kurt Warner to play before Eli took over the starting job. Right. And and then Kurt was a classy guy to say, "I'm going to help Eli." Yeah, but Kurt, they, Kurt also wound up leaving the Giants and wound up going on, going on to win a title after that. So, you know, Kurt Warner was 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 a pretty special player. The guy's in the Hall of Fame. So, but the the outrage and the thing that had Giants fans so infuriated was Geno Smith. It wasn't Davis Webb. If Davis Webb would have started yesterday, people would have been upset because I think they would have liked to have seen seen Eli at least start a few more games. But you need to find out what you have with Davis Webb. That doesn't happen by starting Geno Smith, watching him play a Geno Smith mediocre game. His quarterback rating was something like between 35 and 40. Not good. All right. He threw for about 210 yards. He fumbled twice, which is something that Geno does a lot. He fumbles. But this does nothing. Yesterday did nothing for the Giants. It did nothing to advance the franchise. It did nothing to let the Giants know what they have for the future. Geno Smith is not part of the future. Davis Webb might be. We don't even know if he is because he hasn't he hasn't even been active for an NFL game yet this season. The Giants need to find out what they have with Davis Webb. And until they do that, if 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 this first of all, McAdoo, Ben McAdoo, the coach, we don't even know. He might be fired while we're on the air. Which wouldn't be the first time some big stories. <laughs> exactly. But the Giants need to need to I mean, if, if anybody's going to start next week, it needs to be Davis Webb or Eli Manning. But Geno Smith, all right, you saw, you saw what Geno can do yesterday. That's, that's who he is. He's not going to be great. He's not going to be really bad. He's going to be kind of good. Right. Yesterday he was mediocre. That's what he's been for that's what the he does overwhelming good majority of his starts in the NFL, save for a couple. Right. So you know what you have with Geno. Geno doesn't need to be on the roster next year. I'll so be surprised if he is. Let's see what Davis Webb can do. Assuming he's ready, he should be ready. I mean, otherwise, otherwise he's getting into Christian Hackenberg territory. But if and if he's not ready, then the Giants know they need to pick a quarterback in 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 the in the upcoming draft. Then it's a lock because if the guy doesn't know what he's doing by by week thirteen, then there's a problem. So that that's my that's my take. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm looking at it. As actually, what? I have my take, but I'm Go not going to give it to you right now because no? um, we're going to be talking to Bill Madden in a minute. All right, and are we going to go to break? Well, yeah, let's go to break. All right, let's we'll go to break. Let's go to so break. But talk, I have I have Bill. a different look at it too, brother. It's not. Uh, just, of course you do. Um, you're, you're, not, you're a contrary person. That's not true. That's, that's not not on this is, case. That is true. But we'll see. We'll anyway, see what your take is. I'm we'll, curious to hear it, brother. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to from the press box, streaming on the iHeartRadio app, and be a podcast on Spreaker.com later on. This program is brought to you by the Chocolate Expo, a bomb image group event coming to the Cradle of Aviation in Garden City on Sunday, December 10th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Featuring tasting and sales of chocolates, baked goods, specialty foods, gelato, cheeses, wines, beers, craft sodas, and more from local, regional, and international vendors. Including celebrity chef demos, a dance party, face painting, and balloon twisting for kids. Plus a visit from Santa and Mrs. Claus. Kosher, vegan, sugar-free, and gluten-free options. Options available. For more information, visit thechocolateexpo.com. All hit music. For all those songs radio has forgotten about, 
Join me, Big Ed, Mondays from 10 a.m. till noon for the Good Gold Show. We'll bring back all the great hits of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and more. The sounds of doo-wop to disco, all the Motown soul and great rock and roll. We'll even take your requests and dedications to the Good Gold Show. Music. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC and streaming on the iHeartRadio app. Gotta love, again, this is great theme stuff here. Yes. Anyway, we have Bill Madden of the Daily News on the phone. He broke the story or for uh, Aaron Boone becoming the manager of the New York Yankees. Bill, welcome back to From the Press Box. It's great to have you back. Good to be here. Um, first of all, um, what, what, what's the, what was the, the story about Aaron Boone, of all people, becoming the, the Yankees manager in the sense that he, he's only been a, a broadcaster for a few years, really. Well, I think, I think what's going on in baseball now is really apparent, and that is the new general managers today, uh, most of whom are heavily into the analytics, uh, do not look at managers the way the general managers of the old used to look at them. Uh, the days of Billy Martin, Leo DeRocher, uh, you know, um, even Gene Mock, people like that, uh, those days are over uh, when it comes to the hiring of managers today in baseball. And I think the reason is they want managers who are going to be into the analytics, they're going to be into the communication with the players, and um, it's not so necessary for managers to be uh, uh, um, skilled strategists uh, in the in the vein that uh, Billy Martin was, uh, gut managers, so to speak. Uh, they don't want that anymore. And so, as a result, you're going to see more and more managers getting jobs like Aaron Boone without any experience in actually managing games. Uh, and I think that probably more than anything else was behind this this uh, decision by Brian Cashman. You look at all the people he interviewed. The only one who was really had ever been a manager in the big leagues was Eric Wedge. And uh, there was right. no way he was getting this job. <laughs> Bill, it's uh, Tim Leonard here. Uh, how big of a risk is this move for the Yankees to hire someone with, with just absolutely no coaching or managing experience? Well, it's a risk. There's no question about that. Uh, but like I said before, uh, general managers like Brian Cashman and a lot of the other ones, they're willing to take this risk now because they want a guy in their mold. In other words, a guy that will be in, into the analytics. He'll be into the uh, uh, the nurturing or, or, or the communication skills for the players. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it also helps that they can handle the media because, um, when things go awry next summer, uh, Brian Cashman wants a guy on the field who, uh, will be able to, will be adept at handling the media. And as you know, in New York, every day is a crisis in New York <laughs> yes, when you're is. managing <laughs> this team. And Cashman doesn't want that to come down on him. So, uh, I think that had a lot to do with the hiring of Aaron Boone because Aaron is a skilled, uh, media-savvy guy, having worked at ESPN all those years as an analyst. Uh, the New York media knows him well, like him a lot. Uh, he's a great guy. Uh, and so uh, that was a big factor in this. What I mean, aside from, from what you just said, what do you think it was about Boone that made him the guy, like the, the choice for Cashman? I mean, you just went through a couple of things, but was there anything else involved in it, or, or was it was it primarily the, the communication aspect and and the, the the part about being media savvy and the communication? I mean, were those were those the three main factors? I think they were. Uh, I think I think he I think he uh, I don't want to say blew them away because I don't know how forceful his um, his interview was, but and apparently uh, he was very. He, very much impressed them with his baseball knowledge. You remember this kid? This kid grew up out of the womb, right. <laughs> learning about baseball. I mean, his grandfather was an all-star with the Tigers and the uh, Indians in the fifties, and his um, his father was a great, a very good catcher. Uh, 
uh, and a manager of two teams. And then, uh, of course, his brother played uh, 